Hello, everybody. This is Michael Pucciarelli, creator of Still Life Photography, Michael Pucciarelli YouTube channel. And I recently made a change in my channel. It's all called Still and Landscape of Michael Pucciarelli. And it's a brand new section. I'll be talking about landscape photography in terms of camera settings, in terms of Photoshop, in terms of equipment. So tonight's uh, presentation, we're going to be talking about the R5 and R6 of the Canon mirrorless system. We're going to talk about some camera settings that I use. And we're just talking about the camera settings. And every artist has their own camera settings. I got my own, so you'll learn what I use tonight. So like I said, you're talking about the mirrorless R5 and R6. And, and I recommend you the R6, R5, or R3. All the mirrorless are great to use, but you know, I'm trying to decide between the R5, R6, and R3. So I decided to get the R5 and R6. And I'm very thankful for the Canon converter. It's a great to use in any non-RF lens. And so it'll save me money down the road, but maybe I'll buy a you know, regular RF lens. But right now I'm very happy with the Canon converter and the R5 and R6, I use it for both my non-RF lenses. And I have a YouTube video below on the R6 of the channel. And they also have the R5. So in this recording will be and a new section landscape of my YouTube channel. And these are the lenses I use. I use all these for outdoors. A lot of times, you know, love the 7200, um, the F4, it's lightweight, it's lighter than the 2.8. It's not as heavy as the 100 to 400, but both are great to use. And I also love to use my prime, like for architecture, or as easy the 35 or the 24. And then for, and I also use the EF 85 and 50. So they're all great to use for outdoor lenses. And, you know, the prime lenses are cheaper in price and sharper in focus, but technology is catching up that they're both just as good. Image stabilization, I use a little differently. Some camera systems like Nikon call it vibrant reduction. Um, you're safe using this feature without a tripod. You're not safe using it with a tripod because the pixels, the image may not process correctly. You could have problems with the color. It's hard to say. It just you may put some weird sharpening techniques if you turn it on using a tripod. I always turn it off even when I don't use a tripod. And, but the stabilization, the stabilizer is there if you need it. Now the manual focus, autofocus, since I'm outdoors, I always like to use the autofocus. Sometimes I can't switch to manual focus. And you know. So, and if I were to use an autofocus, a manual focus outside, I'd do a pre-focus with the autofocus and then switch to manual. But, you know, I know the other types of photography, like light painting, I do a pre-focus, then switch to manual focus. My regular still life, I just use the autofocus. So, in terms of still life and landscape, I'll be using the autofocus more than my still life, especially light painting. So there's a difference between you know, the image quality for the R5 and the R6. And you look at the picture on the right, it's the R5, it's 45 meg, the condensed raw. I'd use a JPEG just for the Wi-Fi, but you look at the picture on the right, left, um, it's 20 megs and it's like half the size of the R5, 
And let's use a JPEG for the Wi-Fi with the phone. I do all my editing in both files with the .co3 file. I convert it to the DNG and the DNG are more compact. No data is lost and they come up quicker when you open a, you know, a folder in Windows Explorer and they're easy to work with. So this is what my general you know, diagram looks like. And when I'm outdoors, I basically like to use ambient light, natural light. I never use flash outdoors. Maybe I'm doing models, yes, but landscape, never. So I always want to have my ISO at 100. So when I show photographers, they use auto, like for wedding, fine, but not me. And to control the ambient light, I like to cut the shutter in half, maybe go from 125th to 250th or 250th to 500. So to working with ambient light, I like to, you know, work in the shutter first. Now, I'll have settings in all these. And you know that the R5, R6, uh, you could have two cards in the camera. And I'll talk about that later. And the R5, R6 has different, you know, focusing techniques. And also R5, R6, and also all the Canon cameras too, they have Wi-Fi, which is really, you know, improved and taken storm. I'll talk about that later too. The drive mode, whether you use light painting or, you know, landscape, regular still life, I like to just use the regular shooting mode. Now I have used the H high speed and low speed. They're great if you want to take a quick picture without a tripod. And I've also used the timer for both the two second and you know 10 second. Sometimes you could do HDR with you know a two second timer, but sometimes you could just maybe you could switch it to the H high speed continuous to take many shots, but I'd rather just have it in a single shooting mode. The many, you know, camera modes we can use, picture style mode, I always like to use the standard because it applies a little sharper to the image. All those are great for the use, like the portrait for the P, landscape for the L, FD. Neutral means no camera settings applied. And then F has certain settings. And then monochrome, where the pixels are affected before taken out of the picture. Um, in terms of black and white, I do everything in Photoshop. So a lot of times I just have, you know, it's the S standard. But you can, and sometimes I do use the one, two, three user defined settings if I'm doing handheld photography, you know, outdoors. You have the focus mode. Um, I like to use the regular auto focus mode because you focus on, you know, several parts of the photograph. And I've also used the 1053.8 focus. That works well. But I still prefer the zone auto focus. I feel like that helps to do my job better. I tried experimenting with the vertical and horizontal, they work well. You get the single point of focus where you move the cursor where you want the focus. Spot is great for macro photography. I mean, I've heard great things about the spot on a focus, but I have not tried it, but I'm sure it works good. Then there's tracking, and I try tracking with portraits and other objects, and it works good. A lot of times, you know, I just like to use the zone of focus because you know you focus on several parts of the photograph and it helps me do my job. Now for the white bounds, sometimes I use a daylight preset or sometimes I just set the Kelvin to 5600. And the other, you know, settings, the shade, the cloud, they're great to use depending on the lighting conditions. Tungsten's great where if your back is toward the sun to make the sky nice blue. But I always set 
the Kelvin to 5600. So, you know, when the light changes, you don't have to do a new custom white balance. Only if, you know, the aperture changes. I've experimented with the custom white balance, but I prefer, you know, set the Kelvin to 5600 and just let it, you know, let that be the Kelvin. Now, AWS I never use because um, I feel like, it, like it's at least natural. I feel like they're not in control of the colors of the camera. It's like the colors don't even look natural. So I know in video mirrorless, that's really a different story, but for regular, even though, even though I'm using mirrorless, I still want to use, you know, either the daylight or set the Kelvin to 56K. And high speed ISO noise reduction. I always want to disable it for probably exposed image. Low is good or okay to use, but you should avoid using standard because unless maybe you're shooting a very high ISO, but you know, with technology day, with you know the noise removal software, you know, Topaz, Camera Raw, they could take the noise out. But why not avoid, you know. The noise, but just from a properly exposed image. So that's better to not use this setting than to use it. The long exposure noise reduction is, I always want to disable it for a properly exposed image, but long exposures. Uh, earlier DLSRs, when they first came out, had like a blue color cast or blue streaks of light or something. But, and that's why they have the enable setting. But problem is if, you know, you shoot fireworks and you shoot something quick and take another picture or whatever, camera will have to reset and it may take a while. So you miss the shot. And that's why I run the disable or just use auto. So the color space, there's two color spaces I use. I first start with the Adobe RGB. So over 57 billion colors, but then convert to sRGB, which is significantly less colors. The color RGB and the sRGB, it's really great for posting on the web or copying in Photoshop, but when I copy in Photoshop, I want to make sure I don't check off that, you know, your favorite profile. But if you do post on the web, you want to have that, you know, checked off. Because if you don't, if you, you know, suppose you check off convert SRG proof profile and you copy, you know, the JPEG in Photoshop, you could have an error message. And that's why I decided to just, if I'm copying in, you know, Adobe Photoshop, don't even bother checking that SRGB convert the profile off. The image will work a lot better. So I don't want to, you know, mess around the Adobe sRGB and sRGB. You just want to try to keep, you know, the profiles more accurate. I know there's Profoto that, you know, you have over 280 trillion colors, but, you know, the human eye, every human eye in the world can only recognize two or three million colors. And two or three million colors is a big difference between, you know, 57 billion or 60 million, and especially 281 trillion, because we can't even see colors in that, in the trillions. We only see colors maybe two or three million. So if you think about for a photo, think of all the colors that you won't see, but some people do use it and know that, you know, technology is changing that for a photo may, you may be able to work with different colors down the future with Profoto, but you know I still recommend RGB and sRGB. And CMYK for you know great for printing, but so I start from the WRGB and then switch over to sRGB, and, and I use files in two different ways.
Uh, cropping aspect ratio. So if you're using full frame, you want to uh, use the word full, as you see that the square here, and you use all the pixels. 1.6 is great crop factor for the sensor C lens. Uh, the problem is with 1.6, the 1.1, the 4.3, the 16.9, you're not taking all the advantage, you're not taking advantage of the complete pixel power like you are in the full. But that's why I just rather just leave it at full because sure the files might be bigger, but in terms of editing, there's a difference between you know a full aspect ratio and the aspect ratios are to the you know right of full. The exposure bracketing, auto exposure bracketing is, I only use one stop because of, you know, regular stop, one stop over, one stop under. It also reduces stops. You could put the over before the under or the under before the over. But I always want to um, expose a stop difference. Sometimes if it's a bright sunny day and I see contrast, it's where you want to expose, you know, for the highlights where that so if you're doing HDR, you might want to try to have the regular file a stop underexposed. So when you go a stop over, you could work with all the pixels. But sometimes I know that's hard, but I just think when you're using auto, you know, exposure bracketing that a bright sunny day. You want to expose one stop less to make up for the highlights and it, you know, avoid the blinkies, you know, on the camera screen. Yeah, AF techniques, you know, when I first bought my R sticks, the thing would always be focusing. So I just would turn it to manual focus so that thing would be quiet. But but you can also disable it when the settings. So it's better to disable the continuous AF because, you know, you're the boss when it comes time to focus your camera. But if you disable it, if you enable it, sorry, that they have the thing, you know, focus when you don't want to. So just better to disable it. Increments, I use one third increments for, you know, aperture, uh, shutter speed, uh, ISO. For the ISO, I'd like to go 100 to 200, but I could go in between, but, and the thing about, you could bracket way more than three shots for an image. You could do many more, like 15 or, but more than three, but I still want to just have three. Now, the thing is that both the R5 and R6 can use the SDHC and the SDXC. And both cards are great, but there's a difference between the XC ending card. It's a lot greater speed and a lot more storage. There's a difference between, you know, two terabytes of storage and 32 gigabytes of data storage. And and that the XC is known to be 10 times faster than the HC in the card. Then there's the CF, you know, type B memory card that only the R5 can use this card where you could record video, you could record 4K and HD full video. And those great speeds, 1800 megabits read, Write speed over a thousand. And the many ways you can use uh, the cards. You can uh, disable one card. You can have two cards. You can record both cards at the same time, or you could just you record one card then record on another. So some people just like to have backups 
I back up on one card. So if we delete a file, you only delete from one of the cards, not both. The options are down here. We have auto switch, record separately, or just record to multiple. So if you're going in one of those uh, lifetime trips, you might want to think about recording to multiple. The most, you know, like I said, the lenses I use, like I said, the 7200 is for outdoors, but in the EF, they're all, they're all very good to use outdoors. So outdoor photography, like I said before, it's a different ball game than inside because of the light, the ambient natural light, the bright sun. So these are my um, photography groups. The still life fine arts growing every day. Other groups are growing a little more slowly. Some of those groups are run with other people. Some are run by myself. And these are my meetup clubs below. These are my business links, uh, Instagram, uh, Google, and uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. And this is my fine art site. I'm going to bring it up. Actually, this is my, yeah, this is my fine art site where... I have services for this, services of black collection for calorie, and also old products. So I have three different types of still life services. This is my light paintings. This is my plexiglass reflections. This is in the natural light. And here's my portfolio. I'm always showing what I'm working on, you know. My watch, my black flexing, my reflections, part of my gallery work, objects like this. This is my light painting, what my light painting gallery looks like, paintings like this. So this is done in a studio. The studio. This is another still life where I use glass or fruit. So this is my sort of reflections, black and white. This is my YouTube of still life and also landscape. In my playlist. So my landscape, I'm going to upload this video to recording to so get if you like. You have equipment, you have light painting webinars, we have black collectors webinars, we have white software webinars. So, so uh, thank you for listening. And maybe consider liking and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm sure you'll find something you like. And just thank you for uh, letting me give this short webinar on how I use settings with the Canon R5 and R6 in landscape photography.